Hey there everybody. So uh, as I'm getting down to the final stages of the Sidrod HON3 AGEIR box cab project, I thought it might be a good idea to round up all of the concurrent side rod uh, diesel and gas mechanical projects I've got going on and uh, maybe take them out for a little drive. So first up we've got the uh, 45 ton center cab that's been converted to HON3 from a uh, Bachman Spectrum model. Next up we have my pair of nearly completed Grantline 23 ton box cabs with side rods, also with uh, DCC and sound, so you have lighting. And uh, here comes the 45 ton GE side rod HON3 engine. And last but not least, my Davenport gas mechanical, which was a, a CAD model graciously supplied by YouTuber Schmuck804. And this engine is also soon to have DCC, sound, and lighting. And uh, getting very close to the final stages of completion on this one. It's going to be exciting. That one's a HON30, which is why it's riding on a flat car. So that said, let's, uh, let's dig into the 45-ton uh, the box cab. What you're looking at right now on the screen is actually the final development build for the model. So... All the details are complete and installed. This is the uh, kind of the last revision before the final print. And uh, a lot has changed since the last time I did a quick review on YouTube of this project. So let's jump into what's changed on this model since the last time we had a review of the project. The big things you're going to notice is there's a full set of wire detail. All the grab irons are in place. The only thing that's missing is the uh, the breaker bar that goes to the coupler. And that'll get put in uh, on the final model after it gets painted. And there's going to be a little, a little piece here, which if you look at Central New Jersey 1000, um, there's a little piece that actually fits here where the bronze pin is for the coupler that um, transmits the motion from the, the lift bar down to the, uh, to the coupler pin. Also on the subject of the end beam, you can see that there's been a lot of evolution with the coupler pocket and the draw bar. Um, and we'll take a look at some of those parts with a little more detail after this. But again, if you look at Central New Jersey 1000 and how the coupler pocket on that looks, this is really closely uh, modeled after that, with the exception that it's been moved down, so the center line works for narrow gauge coupler height. And uh, it was probably two weeks and about ten different iterations until I was happy with what's going on here. The other cool thing is that this is a working radius bar, and it's actually got uh, spring centering, so pretty cool. You may also notice that it's got surgeon's couplers now. And uh, I've moved towards those on all of my uh, all of my models from here on out. I think they're pretty exceptional. They look great. Uh, other than that, go to a side view here. Just kind of see how the side detail has turned out. So no major changes from the last time, other than uh, again the bent wire detail. Try not to wobble this too much as I'm turning it. Yes, this is an airbrush turntable that's been converted. It's a little shaky. Um, the other fun thing, I highlighted this a little bit last time, but now it's a little bit clearer. There's a, 
on the headlight here, you can see that the center is cored, and I'm actually going to bring fiber optics through that into the back of an MV lens. So it should look incredibly realistic uh, when I'm done with the installation. So I think that about covers it. We're going to look at the other side real quick. And you'll notice there is no wire detail on this side because there was no point on doing both sides. I got my, my details figured out. Again, this is just a development build. This is not going to be the final model. All right, so let's uh, take a quick look at the final parts kit that I've got printed out and uh, just kind of talk through that a little bit. Obviously, this is a pile of parts. Uh, this is going to be the final build. So, final body, I uh, had a couple small revisions there. And uh, one of the things I discovered was that it was really good to fully locate the uh, radiator tanks and these guys have nine locating pins now and that's uh, it's doing a really good job of keeping it secure and keeping it from warping. Um, did a little bit of cleanup work on the centerpiece here with the exhaust and um, I'm going to use a precision scale brass bell polished up. It'll look real nice. Our little vent stack here is finalized. The uh, headlights, that moved. Um, headlights turned out really nice when we talked about the fact that these are, you know, cord for a fiber optic line. So going over to the, the chassis. So a little bit of work on here. And I want to highlight how cleanly uh, this printed. So this is actually the support side. And I played with the support settings a little bit. And was able to get this very clean separation from the support. It's really nice. Uh, much better than previous attempts. Um, there are ladders. So the air tanks are still mounted uh, on their supports because the straps are really delicate. So I'm going to wait to separate those until I'm ready to actually paint them and mount them. Here's the base plates that go into the tanks. Air brakes and rigging. This is the little tiny chain roller. Um, and that, uh, that constitutes the chassis. So going over here, this is the final set of trucks. So a couple minor changes were made to these, including um, adjusting the center lines of these holes. So the center to center distance was increased between the gears, uh, just to deal with the fact that the plastic gears from Bachman had some uh, irregularities and they were getting some binds, so that's been rectified. You also notice that uh, this end has been rounded off and that's to help it fit the Bachman chassis on the 45 tonner and um, not hit the couplers. So that's a little bit of a challenge there. And my final counterweights. So I went ahead and 3D printed these instead of using the die cast ones and um, honestly they just they look much better than the originals. And uh, I was able to size the depth of these to just just where they needed to be in order to accurately place them on the axles and have the the right um, depth I guess um, under the chassis with the side rods so that they wouldn't run into my ladders and break them which was a problem so that's basically it uh, this is this is the pile of parts that's going to get sanded and finished and painted hopefully here in uh, the next week or two incredibly excited this has been a really long project. Oh, before I forget, um, I have picked out the final color for this. It's definitely going to be Flow Quill. Uh, I think it's R172 DNRGW Orange. Um, I can't think of a color, any other color that I would want to paint this thing. It should, uh, it should really be punchy with that orange. I'm excited about it. It's an obnoxious color in the uh, that amount of surface area. Alright, I just want to have a quick focus on the end beam since there's been so much recent development on this and I'm finally happy with it. Uh, you know, our journey started here with a KD714 coupler and a not terribly realistic coupler pocket. It was okay, but 
I just felt like the rest of the model was getting to be very realistic and this wasn't going to cut it. So uh, I started using the Surgent's couplers on all of my models because they're ultra realistic and that drove me to really spend some time developing a, a coupler pocket and a draw bar that were more accurate. So here's a breakdown of the parts. You can see the the draw bar here with the whisker style centering springs that I put into it and here's the screw that actually goes through there and will retain the end beam and screw this actually into the frame. Uh, here's the surgeon's coupler which has been cut down and we'll show you what happened with that really quickly. This bronze pin actually holds that all together just like the prototype. and try to grab this so that we can look in here. Uh, you can very clearly see the two rectangular slots in there that are what the coupler actually fits into. Again, this is very much like the prototype that I was referencing. Let's see if I can pick this up without dropping it. Um, you can see here the, the two tangs on the back of that then fit into the coupler pocket. Try not to fiddle with that too much. So that's that's the story of the end beam. Uh, this piece actually fits in from the front here. Obviously, it would get the whiskers on it, but that slides in from the front, and then the screw goes through here to pin it all in place. There's a little recess in here, a uh, little counterbore that that fits in, and then, like I said, that that's what pins everything together with the chassis. So these are still removable uh, after the model's been assembled. So yeah, um, finally happy with it. All right, just try to uh, get a little bit clearer footage of what this looks like when it's put together. Okay, just a quick demonstration here. The coupler centering spring. All right, folks. Well, uh, as always, thank you for stopping by. Hopefully the next time we see each other on YouTube, this thing will be fully assembled and wearing some paint. And I'm uh, definitely looking forward to wrapping up this project. It's been a really long one. That said, let the box cab take it on out of here. <laughs>